I am waiting for myself. From the well of the self, it will take time until the water comes. I will have to endure thirst for longer than I can bear. So I choose solitude. I live among many people, like them, and I do not think in my own way. Then, after time has passed, people will expel me from myself and try to take away my soul. So I harbor ill will toward all people and fear all people. Then, for me to grow well again, I need a desert. The most common defect in many cultures and educations gradually became clear to me. Nobody learns, strives, or teaches how to endure solitude. Some people have become too accustomed to being alone. So they compare themselves not to others, but have quiet and joyful conversations with themselves, laugh, and continue their solitary lives. However, when compared with others, they tend to brood over themselves and underestimate their worth. Therefore, they have no choice but to forcibly relearn a good and just evaluation of themselves from others. Even from this acquired evaluation, they will try to deduct and belittle some parts. Therefore, we should allow some people to be alone and should not indulge in the foolish act of pitying them for being alone, though it may be common. If one were to hear what people think of them, and hear that story every day, even the strongest person would inevitably perish. Others keep us alive every day to pass judgment on us. Even if we receive praise or criticism, or become the object of expectations or hope, Let's not lend an ear to it. Trust me. The most dangerous way of life can bring about the greatest abundance and the greatest joy. Build your city on the volcano Vesuvius and launch your ship into the unknown sea. And fight with yourself. In the world, there is a path that only I can walk. Don't ask where that path goes, just walk. A person can climb the highest when they don't know where their path will take them. We are like items displayed in a store. We endlessly organize, hide, or reveal the visible characteristics that others own in us. It's a way to deceive ourselves. In fact, we can manage impulses like a gardener. And, as someone knows, anger, sympathy, deliberation, and vanity can be usefully grown like beautiful fruits hanging on a fence. If there is someone who hates themselves, we should fear them. Because we would become the victims of their anger and revenge. Therefore, we need to think of ways to help them to love themselves. For active people, there is a higher dimension of activity. They roll mechanically like a rolling stone, according to their dullness. Like all humans have been, they are now either slaves or free people. Because anyone who does not spend the third of their day for themselves is a slave. If all noble morals originate from affirming oneself with pride, the morals of a slave deny from the outset what is outside, what is different, what is not oneself. Among those with a slave mentality, there are those who are so grateful for the grace they have received that they strangle themselves with the cord of gratitude. If there is anything great in a person, it is that they are a bridge. If there is anything in a person deserving of love, it is that they are a process of crossing over, of descending. Those who wish to become light and desire to become birds must love themselves. If one is not a creator, no one knows what is good and what is evil. The most vile enemy you can encounter is always yourself. You hide yourself, 
waiting in caves and forests. Lone one, you are on your way to yourself, and your journey passes by yourself and seven demons. The noble human respects the strong one inside himself, the one who has the power to control himself, the one who has mastered the art of speaking in silence, and shows respect for one who is strict and stern with oneself and expresses reverence for all such things. One of the hardest things for a noble human to understand is likely vanity. Those who speak very passionately about their rights are usually those who doubt their rights in their heart. He tries to paralyze discernment and skepticism by drawing passion towards himself. Thus, he achieves success among those around him by eliminating the hesitations of conscience. Love reveals the noble, hidden characteristics and precious, exceptional aspects of the loved one. In this regard, love may cause a misperception of the person's mundane aspect. People begin to forget to love others, and as a result, can no longer discover lovable aspects within themselves. Those who deliberately force and try to gain the intimacy of others often lack confidence in securing that intimacy. Those who trust themselves do not place much importance on intimacy. When others speak ill of us, it can sometimes be an expression of anger or discomfort that originated, not from what we said or did, but from entirely different reasons. Why do we feel a pang of conscience after social gatherings? It is because we treated serious matters lightly or did not speak faithfully when commenting about people. Or it may be that we remained silent when we should have spoken or did not seize the opportunity to get up and leave the place. In the end, it's because we acted as if we were part of the crowd at the gathering. Thanks for watching.